Ming's Christmas Wishes is a book about a little girl, Chinese girl growing up in California in the 1930s. Her parents have immigrated from China, and she, being the oldest of the American-born children, is the one who has to push into American society, and there are a lot of obstacles to doing that. And at the same time, she's a little girl who somehow or other always manages to anger her mother. So she's kind of caught between these two worlds. And at Christmas, after having been denied the opportunity to sing with the school choir, she decides she's going to do something to celebrate Christmas, and she fixates on the idea of getting a Christmas tree, which makes her mother very angry. It's the story of how she and her father um, navigate that tension and resolve the situation for her to pursue her Christmas wishes. My husband's family is Chinese. They immigrated to the United States at about the same time my European ancestors came here. So they were here as early as 1874 and are really an important part of American history, as were the Chinese immigrants of their day. I think writing this book has made me more aware of the immigrant experience and more understanding of the complexity of what it means to be a stranger in a strange land and hopefully more compassionate to people who are dealing with those kinds of adjustments. I knew Ming, Auntie Kay, when she was in her 70s and her 80s. And I think at that stage of her life, she understood the wonderful gifts her parents had given her, the gifts that had come from her heritage and from their sacrifices. So I think if Ming were here today, she would be grateful to both her father and her mother for the life that they gave her. Well, this character, Pop, is my husband's grandfather. And he has the reputation in the family for being able to just bring people together and make things magic. My husband's grandmother never learned to speak English, and so she was often confined to the, to the home, to the laundry where they made their living, and didn't go out on adventures like her husband did. For example, he took my father-in-law as a young teenager to cross the Golden Gate Bridge on the day that it opened, so they were part of that little bit of American history. And then he would come back and narrate them in a very animated way to his wife who didn't get to have the experience. So she could, through his narration, um, share in that excitement and that wonder. So he was just an amazing, wonderful, sensitive, wise character, and I hope that comes through in the book. We had the great opportunity of working with a wonderful illustrator named Masa Tateje. He was so intent on capturing the emotion of the story, capturing the details of the time period and the magic of Christmas, um, the warmth of family, the blessing that nature is, all these things that are part of the story. He really masterfully illustrated. My favorite all have to do with nature, and one of the first, it's when Ming is waking up the morning when she gets to go with her father to actually look, maybe, for a Christmas tree. And we see the Great Silver River, which is what the Milky Way is called in Chinese. And I love when they drive into the forest and you see the snow falling among the sequoias. And I love this little piece where the father and the uncle are telling stories about their many experiences um, together in the United States over, over the course of 30, 40 years that they were here before Ming comes onto the scene. Those are all family stories. Family history matters in so many ways. This is a story about belonging and about resilience, two things we talk about a lot today that are important as always in our society. And sometimes we think of forming an identity independent of those deep fam familiar relationships that really do make us who we are. So knowing your family history helps to make it possible for you to see multi dimensions of who you are and multiple roles that you play. And it helps, it helps you be resilient in the face of difficulty because your ancestors have faced difficult things and survived and even come out stronger. And that's a great lesson for anyone to learn, child or adult. In the story, the father's an important resource. Part of what he's trying to do for his daughter in the story is to make it possible for her to draw on sources of strength that he knows about. And in his experience, those have been the family, the extended traditions of China, which he, he honors and wants her to understand are not a source of embarrassment, but a source of strength. And then nature, there's an important part of the story when they're out in the beautiful sequoia forest and 
he wants his daughter to understand that in nature she can feel strength there as well. So giving children resources to know that they are valued and valuable I think is really important. I think the father does that in this story. So in the story, Pop has Ming all to himself and has a chance to advise her effectively about how to deal with these problems that she has. He doesn't tell Ming to go out there and fight her demons. He tells her to understand the people who are, who are making her life difficult. And he helps her understand um, that there are other ways of looking at the world. I think that's a really valuable thing. Surely there are times it's good to face a problem head on and confrontation can be a valuable strategy. But a lot of times, I think the wiser, better way is the one that Pop gives Ming. And you have to read the story to see what that means exactly. I hope that parents and children read this book together, because I think there are a lot of things to talk about it as you go through. I hope that children read the book understanding that Ming is both very like them and that her experience is quite different than theirs and that they can learn a lot about themselves from the experience she's having. I hope they can relate to her and the joy she finds in her relationship, especially with her father.